welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some Callista Profiteer. So this is going to be another meme tier deck where we are going to be trying to combine Callista and Profiteer. So Profiteer is a 4-mana 5-3 that whenever it's summoned, you create a lucky find in hand to be able to give a buff to one of your allies. All right, pretty cool, pretty cool. Important thing here is that it's a summon ability. So if your Profiteer dies, it's a follower, has a summon ability, and if you have a leveled up Callista, whenever you attack, um, then you put you revive an attacking ephemeral copy of the strongest follower. And so our strongest follower in our deck, it goes by um, power, is going to be Profiteer. So when Callista attacks, we can put a Profiteer into play. It summons a Lucky Find. And then after combat, we can use that Lucky Find to give a buff to the leveled up Callista or to Sivir, because Sivir loves having more keywords and stuff like that. And so that's kind of what we have here, is we have Callista being able to put Profiteer into play attacking. Pretty cool little uh, combo deck with those two. And so we're going to need to be able to level up our Callista. So we're going to have like some early Shadow Owl stuff that we're going to be, um, and you know, Dune Keeper will be sacrificing our own stuff. We have Glimpse Beyond, and uh, to be able to kill our own things, we can Vile Feast. Vlada Caretaker, of course, by itself will level up Callista. So that, that's an easy way to do it. Um, and of course, all that stuff will like attack and do a bunch of damage for Sivir, right? We want to do a lot of damage for leveling up Sivir as well. And then we're going to have Siphoning Strike because we want to have bigger Callista and Sivers. Um, and that also helps level up Sivir. So I think Siphoning Strike could be pretty cool since we're trying to, you know, really use these two champions um, and give them, you know, different buffs with Lucky Finds. So Siphoning Strike should work out well. Um, of course, Sivir has the Spell Shield, so does Ruin Runner. Maybe the Profiteer gives Callista Spell Shield as well. So it makes Siphoning Strike easier to use. And then we got Rekindler, so that if we're, uh, if we do have like any of our champions die, we can revive them with Rekindler. Rekindler also works great with Callista, you know, because if you Callista put in Rekindler, then you get, you know, your, another Callista back or another Sivir back or anything like that. So like that, that's also a great combo. So I think this deck's going to work out pretty well. I'm pretty excited about this. Looks cool. Callista Profiteer. Be something new? I think the only follower in our deck that's bigger than Rekindler is the Profiteer. So it's definitely possible that Callista puts in Rekindler. Ancient Hourglass is just to protect our two champions. Um, I think I'll mulligan that to start with, though, against this Aurelia Azir deck. But I could see that being good. You know, it kind of helps protect our Callista. You know, I could see that being good against um, the Bounce spell if they have that. Ah, uh, Ruin Runner. Yes, Ruin Runner is also a larger follower. So we go Fading Icon on two, Curse Keeper plus Wings in the Wave on three, and then attack. That's not that hard for Callista to pull Profiteer. I mean, it's not like we have two Ruin Runners in the deck. It's not going to be that difficult for. Or it's, it's going to be difficult for Ruin Runner, for us to have a Ruin Runner and it be dead. <laughs> yeah. Ruin Runner is a 6 4 and Darius is a 6 5. Yeah. Ruin Runner is kind of better than Darius. The desert by my side. See what we see, soldier. Azir's command! They've been kind of doing that a lot recently, though. They've been making followers that have been better. Like, Ruin Runner, both, both Ruin Runner and Merciless Hunter, I think, are just too far up the power scale. I could certainly see both both of those. Like, I think I think they're just too powerful. Cause like, Merciless Hunter looks a lot better than a lot of other champions. And same with same with the Ruin Runner, honestly. Okay. Could attack with the two one also. Get a zero to be a one three. It's not that bad. I'll wait though, but I, I could definitely see doing that. This wings in the wave art is really cool, especially when it's attacking like this and you have a uh, picture of both of them. That extended art looks cool. Every rock, every canyon. This is a 
good round for them. But um, blocking with Sivir and with the Escaped Abomination help both you know help Sivir level up. Azir attacking is not something I expected. Not at all. Did not expect that one bit. Block with the 4 2 in case they have like the 1 mana plus 3 plus 1 card. But I feel like if they would have had that, I guess they would have killed my Sivir. You would think. So they have to have another Azir in hand. The only way that that makes sense doing that is having another Azir in hand. Tough spell shield plus two plus zero. Don't need to get two spell shields. So do we want a seven two? Quick attack, they can attack they can attack through the Azir easier or a 5-2 tough. And I think it's just the 7-2. It's gonna make that 33. This, is usual. this pay by the hour. As it must be. Sedition. I'm a woman of principle. Time is clean. Unfortunately, that's just three out of four for this Ricochet. Man, I'd love to play this Ricochet right now. Okay. Two mana discard a card. That's some good luck right there. <laughs> Top card, Ravenous Butcher, obviously. Let's kill Azir, please. Please. Masking nicely. Uh, nope. Only one damage to them, so we did. It did three damage to the other thing. Man. Well, that didn't work out. That didn't work out at all. Like, ever since that attack, this has gone as bad as it could. Yeah, I mean, it's just over. That went terribly. My fee just went up. Yeah, Ricochet does not... It's not too good of a card. Not reliable. I like the Sivir Siphoning Strike. I'm going to keep that. I wish I didn't play the... Uh, Stalking Shadows, obviously, because that missed, but that extra two mana would allow me to play the uh, two drop along with the six drop. Yeah, yeah, that could be possible. Valence as a ricochet is maybe the way worst card in the game. It's it's up there. It it has potential though. It's. High variance card. Guess. We love it when they run. I don't think then. passing is the right thing to do. Obviously, I could just do four to them. But this thing's going to be dying anyway. I guess I'll just. I think this is probably the best thing to do. Especially with like that Scar Grounds. Like, that's kind of scary where. Because, like, if I don't kill. Sorry. If I don't kill that blue sentinel and then they play, you know, like a ice shard or avalanche or anything, then then that blue sentinel gets the plus one plus zero and tough, and then that gets annoying. I feel like that's just the thing to do. How's the market today, Karima? Full of heavy purses and empty heads. Look at that quality! 
Braum plus Scar Grounds plus those Avalanche Ice Shards. Pretty nice. Can't imagine a Scything Strike works, right? Everyone's always says go for it, there won't be a better time. Right, we could draw a Rune Runner. I want the plus two, plus zero. Alfie's helping out Sivir is kind of nice. We're going to need some new cards. Vengeance. So the good news is they only have three cards. Obviously, the bad news is uh, Braum is kind of unbeatable unless we find Vengeance. Well, how about that? Now I gotta figure out how to deal with this trickster. But that's step one. If they have Bastion, I have Vile Feast. Clever. I haven't seen Calista so far. Empty heads. 
<laughs> we can't get any... Uh, can't get anything that useful. It's a 21... Man, that's one short. I guess I could technically Vile Feast. So let's see, I Vile Feast. This pay by the hour. It's a living. Look at that quality! So this keeps this keeps this profiteer this five three profiteer alive, or not? That was a really nice entomb they just had. That elusive GG Scar Ground. Scar Grounds dominated that game. Yeah, there's so many avalanches and ice shards and stuff like that. I, I was too hasty on using the um, the removal spell. The, the five man, this thing, Siphoning Strike. I was too hasty on using Siphoning Strike. Draven Vi. I will keep. My opponent's deck had um, Malphite as the other champion besides Brom. Yeah, the Cosmic Inspiration was a huge hit. Yeah, that that's a like the perfect hit too. That was that was big. they traded Ballistic Bot away. Just for that 3-1. That was surprising. It's just waiting to be found. Danger pays. The problem with the Callista attack, I would trade Callista for Draven. The problem is it does open it up to Whirling Death that, you know, they have another Draven, they can get the Whirling Death in. A little bit of a problem. Her hand has looked a little loaded. Time siphoning strike can be so good. Here's your cut. It's a living. We're at 33 for leveling up Sivir. The party has a Out here, you're moving or you're dead. I 
That's alright. Feel pretty good about this one. There we go. Opponent thinks that uh, that I had it also. That was a really good quality hand for them. That was just a good game. We had a, a good hand as well that really showed the power of Siphoning Strike with Sivir. So Zed with Sharima. No Sivir to go along with the Zed. It'll probably be a pretty fast deck, so I'm going to mulligan the... Yeah, I'm going to mulligan those cards and look for things to make me a little faster. This is looking like a good quality hand. We'll play Curse Keeper on two. Of course, not sacrifice it to Butcher yet. Wait till round three, because three will play Callista and then Butcher. So we can get this, you know, the allies die ability. Man, our hand is pretty loaded. Yeah, so why is the Ascendant deck with like a Zero Renekton Nasus not very good? Is because in order for the Buried Sun Disc to be restored and everything, you need to play a long game, right? Like it's not going to be something that's going to happen in the first five rounds of the game. And the. Uh, so you have to play a longer game, but the metagame is too aggressive. Yeah, I got. No, we're just gonna have to trade Callista off for Green Glade Duo. Metagame is just too aggressive, and. Uh, sorry, Sharima doesn't have the tools to slow down the aggressive decks by itself, right? Like, because you have to play a mono Sharima deck, and it there's just not the tools. There's not, like, the removal, there's not the Nexus healing. There's that kind of stuff. There's just not the tools to play like a, a longer game and survive against Thresh Nasus and a really Azir that puts all the bodies out into play immediately. I don't know how you can come to the conclusion that the Emperor's deck is really bad. I don't know how you can come to that conclusion, but... Am I going Ruin Runner or Profiteer? That's Profiteer. How's the market today, Karima? Well, really want Challenger on this ever. Already has quick attack spell shield. It's the thing about like you really want these other keywords on the Sivir, but it's like the the keywords that we keep getting, we just keep on seeing quick attack and spell shield. I mean, like those are the only keywords we have anyway. The Emperor's deck is not a problem whatsoever. It's it's it, the Emperor's deck is very good. It has there's no problem with the Emperor's deck. It, the the problem is is the region Sharima doesn't have the defensive tools to have a successful um, Sun Disk deck. How's the market today, Karima? Playing the Profiteer, they can block the Marshal. So. Good chance I should just be taking this. Challenger. Yeah, we had that one. Obviously, we're going to play that. Then we're going to be playing the Merciless Hunter. 
a lot of the spells that Shreema has, like Shreema just doesn't have removal, right? Like it has Siphoning Strike is like the only removal spell and it costs five mana. Um, all right, we have Talia Malphite. Gonna have some landmarks. We're going to want to be faster than landmarks. I could see Ancient Hourglass being a good Callista protection. And obviously Callista Caretaker is really strong. Let's keep this Caretaker. We gotta find something to sacrifice. Perfect. Because we have the attack token round four anyway, so like that that fits perfectly after the caretaker. Um, yeah, I guess so. Because once they play a landmark, then that chip turns into a 3 3, and we'd have no, you know, our Doomkeeper is not trading with the 3 3. I'm glad we kept the caretaker. Everyone's a garden. So we're putting a lot of pressure on our opponent. Kind of seeing what they want to do. We can get this game, we can get back to back three twos. Do 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 Yeah, good card. That's too bad, obviously we had um you know our Callista leveling up this round, which would have been quite nice. Good amount of damage for Sivir. <laughs> JJ says, I can see why they had to think about that for five minutes. Yeah, they probably want to kill the champion. Well, that was probably the best four mana card they could possibly have, and then the best five mana card they could possibly have. I'll get double rock bear. Nothing's lost. It's just waiting to be found. Double rekindler. Let's go. We love it when they run. Y'all think they have shape stone? I sure hope not, but if they do, Rekindler will help out. It's a living. It's the only thing to make sense to, to attack with. The four threes don't make sense to attack with because of chip. Okay, well that was good. This Merciless Hunter card may be going places. So they're willing to do the trades. I mean, I'm gonna just be doing the obvious trades. Get to imagine that they're trying to clear room for Malphite, but I could see maybe they're trying to clear room for Talia also, like you know, get the two spawns. That would also make sense. So I'm playing the Ephemeral, because then the Ephemeral will die at the end of the round. So that's one for Callista. I would love to hit Ravenous Butcher. Yeah, 
ass. need one more mana for this black spear. I just don't have it. We burn, then kindle a new. Light it hand for every betrayal and the world burns. So Rekindler brings in Callista and Callista brings in Rekindler. Which brings in Callista. This is what we call Callista Profiteer. Oh no, 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 give me that other Callista! Why was that Callista burned? The two one had to be on the bench, I guess? It's like the... It was putting it over... I don't know. I don't know, man. So obviously, I could sacrifice the Doom Keeper to the Ravenous Butcher right now. It's it's free. But I'm just going to hold on to it with having this Curse Keeper and everything that, you know, that can maybe help out, like my Black Spear. But I guess that would help protect me against an open attack. Maybe I should add that 3-2. Down to six is probably just fine. So now Callista attacking will put in Rekindler, which will put in Sivir. So yeah, no more infinite Callista. But having a bunch of Sivir is definitely really cool too. All that glitters is mine. Doesn't really matter. Yeah, I think they're gonna just kinda die. Unless they play like another Spirit Fire right here. Or Time is money. something like that. So can I can I play Curse Keeper Glimpse Beyond, or is that going to mess up? Like how last time we didn't get that extra Callista, will that mess it up? So no, I can't. I cannot play it. Well, we're not going to be attacking for lethal then. No, we won't. Um, let's see. If I, yeah, I guess I can't though. If I want more Sivers, I can't can't do it. Just gotta wait. Sup, Siphoning Strike. All right, so we know that they have like their one card in hand is a is a celestial card that costs nine plus, and then they just drew a card. Man, I want to play, I want to play siphoning strike. So just grow those three attackers plus two plus two and get rid of a blocker. Man, that sounds pretty good though. You'd think they would get... Yeah, so you'd think they wouldn't take a Celestial spell that they can't play. So they probably have, like, the 9 mana or 8 mana. They probably have either the 8 or 9 mana Elusive, where they're going to be trying to kill us with that and potentially succeeding. 
So you think if the Curse Keeper would attack after the Callistas, then it would be okay? For like attacking with the with another 4-3 and still getting the different Sivers? I guess like, also if you think about it, like getting the extra Sivers uh, probably doesn't matter, right? Because like if they just have like the big Celestial, like we're dead next round. Yeah, I don't, I don't know why, I don't, I don't know. I don't know why we didn't get like that second Callista with the Rekindlers. What's going on? Okay, so it was Living Legends. Living Legends was the best card to have because it could, you know, because you can obviously have like huge, huge potential with Living Legends. Just get nine cards to, to give. Yep. That's why it was the best card to have. And play the butcher. Danger pays. You should watch this. So the good news is that celestial card that they have is gone, right? Like they don't have like the big celestial that's gonna kill me. And you know, like all these celestial cards will go. They're all fleeting. So they're down to just their two random draws from the last uh, two rounds. It would have opened attack. It wasn't lethal, so. Yeah, I still take the two. Like the plus three plus one card I have to block there anyway can't really think of any reason not to cast this Our best top deck was probably like another re like Rekindler, or like Stalking Shadows into Rekindler. That was probably our best top deck at that point, but all good, GG's. Got the win, three and two. So there we go, second deck, second winning record. Got to do some really cool stuff with, we didn't do too much Callista Profiteer stuff, but we did get to do some Callista Rekindler stuff. That's always a ton of fun. And we got to Siphoning Strike, grow up our um, champions got to do early um, Shadow Isles things that are pretty busted to get ahead in some of the games, um, and uh, yeah, did did pretty well. All right, so we'll take that good winning record with a Callista Profiteer deck. So those of y'all watching later on YouTube, hit that like button over there, and of course, feel free to leave those comments. Hopefully, y'all enjoyed these games. Had a lot of pretty fun games against some different decks that you don't always see. That's going to be it for this one. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you for the next video.